it's Jessica and welcome back to Dream Daddy. So in the last episode we finally met all the dads and Joseph is throwing a barbecue in the neighborhood just so everyone can get acquainted with, especially with Darren, our dad. Um, but uh, we met some of the kids as well which is really nice and uh, we met uh, Matt's daughter who's adorable and made him a flower crown. But anyway, let's finish up the barbecue. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Uh -huh. Kinda nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the other kids. If she decides to get into babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. She would, because she seems like to be getting along with Brian's daughter the best. And uh, I can totally see see her being like a totally like a big sister. That's pretty cool. Oh. Hey, why don't you add all of us on dad book? Oh my god, is this like Facebook? Dad book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it. So if you need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Instead of like calling them or going down the street to be like, Hey neighbor! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Huh. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between... Are Carmencia and the and those weird twins. <laughs> I think they're one. I think they want our soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets on the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in time. I feel like that was a networking event. I wish I could have been playing Paranormal Ice Road Truckers. <laughs> I mean, I, I I like I like that. Um, we met the other dads, but I, it seems like the kids. I, I love Amanda so much. Can I just say that she's like the best video game daughter ever. I love her. You and Daisy seemed like you were having way better time than I was. All right. Because we were. <sighs> well, hey, at least you met some of the other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Yay! Amanda and I arrive home with remnants of her veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Why? Cauliflower is so good! You can fight me, like, broccoli is like, okay in my opinion, but I fucking love cauliflower. That's like the best. Next to carrots, that's the best vegetable. <laughs> Any big plans for this evening? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh? Hmm. Is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Uh -huh. You got it. And be careful. Uh -huh. I will. Make good choices. Uh -huh. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're not gonna do this thing while you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that and I will never do that. Uh -huh. Okay, do you have any plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna work on some stuff, see how long I can um, sleep for, throw a party. <laughs> um, I mean, throw a party would be cool, but I, I guess I guess I could just say work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really hope she does have fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn to the and turn on some wine and dine, Master. Mastermind and the celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lambs with rosemary mashed potatoes. I love to be able to cook like that. Although, I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaska all day instead of any food or real nutrition of substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blazed through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. Oh god, I'm not even sure what that one is about. It was a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I, s I send a text. Hey kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen and wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon because definitely taught her better than that to text and drive. That's important. Don't text and drive, kids. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again. And then the phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, so see now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? <laughs> no, no, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman Meat Hall are not only massaging my anxiety, but possibly celebrating it with the yelling. So I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. 
Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who she was even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why didn't I even know any of her friends' full names? I'm not saying like Darren's a bad dad. Like I figured he would be like, where are you going? Or who are you going with? Because usually parents ask that, right? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. Can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweet, thank God you're safe. Aww. Uh, yeah. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Yep. Oh, whoops, I guess I didn't see those. She starts walking to her room. Amanda and... Mm. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Mm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I don't like your attitude. I have the right to be concerned. I was scared. I will say I have the right to be concerned because you did say you would come back at before midnight. You're my only daughter. Aww. Well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't be giving me a curfew in the first place. Oh my god. <laughs> I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired of all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Alright. I'm going to bed now. I know she doesn't mean any harm because she's a kid, right? Like, kids do that. But, like, god damn it. Take responsibility, child. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well that night. I brew some strong coffee and make a scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. <sighs> she eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. <sighs> I thought about what you said last Ooh. night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well, I'm sorry for freaking out on you. I trust you make good- How about we- How about we apologize for yelling at her? Like, I'm not saying she, she can't do good uh, good choices, but you need to know that Darren is still responsible for Amanda, you know what I mean? You're an adult now, and I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Hmm. Team Dangadoo? <laughs> Team Dangadoo. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. Yes. Bless you. <laughs> Alright, I'm off to school. I'll smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Huh? What? What's dad book? <gasps> it's a social media platform. Wait, mm. what? What's social? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Mm. All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Dad. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes uh, setting up my profile on dad book, which turns out to be a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. <sighs> All right, pops, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's get let's get some likes and dislikes. Oh, this is so cool. I like this. Ooh, dad book. On a Friday night, you are most likely to. Ooh, we can pick. I like this. Polish should sort my coin collection. Netflix and grill, baby. Fall asleep watching the History Channel. Turn my children with dad puns. Sl sink into oblivion. Sleep. <laughs> I think. I, I feel like Darren is the type of dad who would be like the dad pun kind of guy. Because he, he's totally like that with Amanda. If you had one thing to take with you onto a deserted island, what would it be? My trusty grill. The lost shaker salt. Cast away on DVD for instruction. A boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My survivors have trained me for this day. <laughs> um, but what can you play the DVD on? I'm gonna say a boat, just as a joke. What are your turn-ons? Strong dad arms. Tennis shoes and white, uh, long white socks. Well manicured lawn. Uh, street smarts. Top tier grillmanship. Comfortable with crying. I don't. I don't know. Um. I mean, as, I want to say this is a joke, strong dad arms, but I want to say, like, D Darren, I don't know. Can I say strong dad arms just as a joke? Is that a thing? Like, I don't fucking know. I want to put that for this joke. What did you want to be when you grew up? Technical writer for manuals, instruction, salty boat captain, pro skater who's almost an astronaut, a good father, the president of space. How about a good dad? Because there's no ska band uh, option here. What's your favorite movie genre? War documentary, Sean Connery's entire filmography, <laughs> anything laserdisc, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, old comedies that haven't aged well. Let's, let's go with old comedies that haven't aged well. What's your ideal date? Napping together, doing a hundred, uh, what, doing a 1000 piece puzzle together, eating healthy, dinner at 4pm. Why would you eat dinner at 4pm? Trying the 
geocache, but uh, but getting lost, ho getting hopelessly lost, arson, being emotionally vulnerable. There's a lot of emotional shit going down here. How about we nap together? That'd be nice. <laughs> what do you? What do you never leave at home without? A sensible cardigan, my sick vape, a book more jumble and pen, a cool knife, my crippling low self-esteem. I frequently forget my phone, keys, wallet at home sometimes. My sick vape, why is that an option? Can I pick that? I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories, how proud of I am of my child. Potentially, potential ends of the world, if I'll ever be able to love myself as, as I love my girl. When I can have my next cup of coffee, lawnmower modifications. If I'm being honest, how proud I am of Amanda. Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day in here just looking at people's profiles. Right. You should message one of them, or more than one of them. All oh, these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise, I'll make some friends. Amanda gives you a hug. Go get him, dad. Yay! <laughs> Welcome, you've got dads. <laughs> You got dads. Okay, so like I said before, I really wanted I really wanted Darren to get with Matt first. We can get him to know better. And then I'm probably gonna go with Damien after. And a lot of you really want me to go after Craig after that. But yeah, well after I pick the dads, you guys will definitely be able to pick the next one for me. Anyway, let's go with coffee dad, Matt. Alright. Matt Stella, uh, avid music enthusiast, passion coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the Coffee Spoon or hanging out in the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no wave music. On a Friday night, you are most likely to, oh, perfect my cold brew setup. One drip at a time, baby. <laughs> if you had one thing to take on a desert island, fine tunes to pass the days away. What are your turn ons? Multi in in instrumentalism. And, uh, what did you want to do when you- Hey, this kind of works because, you know, Darren used to be in a ska band, you know, that kind of works. What did you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly enough. What's your favorite movie genre? Shit with subtitles. Ideal date, we go on an animal shelter and seriously consider adopting our cat. Aw, that's so cute! Um, something you never leave home without? My headphones, both in- Both in-ear and over-ear, just in case. So he brings two types of headphones. Uh, he spends a lot thinking about where did the- Where did writing com- commas into song titles come from and where did it go did we all just agree that this is a bad idea <laughs> okay let's message matt i navigate to matt's dad book page which and type out a message hey man great gang to see you at the barbecue we should definitely hang out soon you free later a minute or two later i hear a ding and see matt's response hey dude i'd be so down for that i'm actually catching a show tonight the sound garden want to come out What's a sound garden? <laughs> it's a concert venue, but also a band that a lot of people listened to back when it was cool to have sound patches. Oh man, I haven't been to a real concert since Amanda was born. Am I ready for this? While I'm thinking, another message pops up on screen. Pop is playing tonight. Cool little indie pop punk rock band out of Canada. Should be a fun one. Oh, this is an actual band that's from here. That, uh, I think they're from Toronto. So, th this is an actual real life band. I didn't know that you were allowed to string that many words together to describe a band. Whatever. Let's get out of my comfort zone. Yeah! I lock off dad and think for a second. Wait, when was the last time I went to a concert? I mentally backtrack the decades through my memories of denim jean jackets and morally and moral panic over teenagers turning the occult. Oh god, I had a mullet back then. Oh god, I thought it was cool. Oh god, other people thought it was cool. I finally remember the strange 80 prog uh, prog rock I used to listen to and mentally envision all the airbrush bands in the parking lot. Man, how did anyone survive the 80s? Okay, so I've been in the concert for a long time. What do I even do at concert shows? I spend most of the day pacing around the house and thinking about my relationship with coolness. I mean, I always thought I was cool, at least relatively to a bunch of uh, other dads my age. Dad, what are you doing? I look over to see Amanda at the door, just getting home from school. Huh. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. <gasps> what's wrong? Hey, what's wrong, Am what's wrong, Panda? I'm oh, fine. nothing, I'm fine. Just got sad because I really said socially, collectively, refusing to take to take pop music seriously despite the fact that some of the most interesting musical innovators are coming out of their, that genre. I think it's just yet another thing that I write off because we can't take young women and, or their interests seriously. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? You have to actually tell me what's wrong. No, I'm gonna ask, are you sure? Amanda, don't lie to me, what's wrong? <laughs> If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you, and I'll always be here for you. Whenever you need a shoulder to cry in, or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm a phone call away. Ah. 
Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. <laughs> but I'm fine, really. Are you sure? I'm so worried about her. <laughs> I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop bar badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Uh. Anyway, what's up? Mm. Amanda, how do I be cool? Mm. Let me put a pot of coffee first. I'm gonna be- this is gonna be a long night. No, seriously, Matt invited me to a concert and I don't think I've been to one since you were born. Ugh. Yeah, you have. You took me to one when I was 12, remember? I'm suddenly overwhelmed by the memory of the sea of screaming preteens. Oh, oh god, I tried so hard to forget. Hmm. The one where I had to camp out, camp out in line with you just so you could get a good spot, and then you cried and screamed the whole time. Hmm. <laughs> Dad, it was so much more than that, and I'm not even ashamed to say it. Oh, you're not ashamed? You seem pretty ashamed when I found all those drawings you made of those dancing boys kissing in your tapper keeper. Hmm. Yeah, well, you didn't even find the good stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> what does that mean? Was she making fan art? <laughs> anyway, you should be all set for the concert if you remember that. Just bring a big glittery sign and cry a lot if you fit it, and you'll fit right in. At a smaller place. And I think that Matt mentioned that they're a punk band? Hmm. Like D.I.G. Glitter Punk? Thrash? Straight Edge? Come on, Dad, give you something to work with here. Mm -hmm. Are they post punk? Pro proto punk? C punk? Jeremy punk? What's Jeremy punk? I made that a one up to see if I could get away with it. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. They're not positive hardcore, are they? Um, he said that they're Canadian punk? Ah. Oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Does the idea of Canadian punk seem contradictory to you? I don't see friendships and politeness as the core of Timothy the punk scene. <laughs> Cause that's stereotypal. Canadians are friendly. <laughs> well, punk is kind of a big genre. That that's not meant to be dangerous as you think it is. It's become much more than just a counterculture rebellion. What I'm trying to say is, just enjoy the music. That's it. Hmm. I mean, yeah. It's not like you're going to jump into the mosh pit or anything. Welcome to the mosh pit, Shaka bra. <laughs> well, that's comforting. And if a strange dude in your set, in a set your gold hoodie offers you to buy merch. Don't accept it, and definitely do not go on three awful dates with him after there, after where he takes you to a nice restaurant and then forgets his wallet literally three times in a row. What? <laughs> Never mind. Just have a blast tonight. I feel like that was that was her on a date with some dude. I show up with the coffee spoon at eight in what I hope to and what I hope is a concert appropriate attire. I see Matt out front locking the door to the shop. Hey, hey you made it. Ready for tonight? Well, it's been a while. Yes, of course. I definitely know what I'm talking about. Ready? I was born ready. Let's be honest. It's been a while. Aw, oh, man. I gotta admit. I haven't been to a real concert since Pet Rocks were cool. I have no idea what I'm in for. Hey. Did your daughter make you take one of those ba boy band concerts where everybody holds signs and scream and cries? Yeah? Hey. I got two lined up next month. I still can't get the glitter out of my car from the last one. Stay strong. <laughs> but dude, I get to take you to your first concert in a long time. This is gonna be awesome. Just hang in with me. Darren, you'll be good. This scene is super supportive. It'll be a blast. Quick question. Oh. Shoot. What is scene? <laughs> Matt lets out a tiny laugh. Hey. Sorry, sorry. It's just weird because scene is described as music scene, as in uh, pertains to the community of people who like the same genre, but can also describe a genre of music no one wants to admit they're into. <laughs> scene music! <laughs> Matt looks off into the middle of the distance. He says nothing, but I can tell he's thinking never again. That's confusing. Hey. You'll get it. The important thing tonight is that you're enjoying yourself. Come on, let's head over to the show. Yay, our first date with Matt! After waiting in a short line to get in, we finally find ourselves in a small venue with a stage at the end of the end of the bar. Most people here are closer to Amanda's age than mine. I suddenly feel out of place. My waiting youth is showing. I am s I am suddenly aware of my morality. When were the good old days of my life? Will Amanda still love me as we both grow older? Wait, is sea punk actually a genre? <laughs> Matt, Matt, you made it! A younger kid runs up and high fives Matt. The kid runs off and, and Matt turns to me, shuddering. I get nervous when people surprise high five me. Me too. Hey. I'm like a small animal. Loud noises and large groups of people frighten me. But he's in the concert! Do you also enjoy curling up to a patch of sunlight and taking a nap? Hmm. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> a couple of people notice that Matt is in the crowd and they yell hey as well. Oh. Matt waves and hugs a couple of people. <laughs> He seems really into his element here. Hey, yeah. Matt turns his attention back to me. I am so afraid that of all these people. Oh, let's grab a beer. Matt and I line up at the bar in the back where a couple of older concert goers hang out. A couple of more people notice Matt and tip their drink to him. Oh. Is he like a singer or something? He seems really popular, right? Seems like you're a popular guy out here. Oh. Uh, yeah. I go to a lot of shows. This is a really cool spot. 
But it's times like these where I realize I can only be charming or funny for about five minutes before I run out of stuff to talk about. And then I become keenly aware of where my hands are. And that no comfortable place in your mouth for your tongue to rest. God damn it, where did I put my tongue? <laughs> See? Well, I've known you for more than five minutes and I still think you're charming and funny. Just you wait. We grab our drinks. This scene seems really friendly. I don't know why people wouldn't want to admit that they listen to it. <laughs> Let's go check out the merch. Hey. Whoa, hello, who's this dude? Matt and I walk over to the small booth in the corner of the room. A crusty looking teenager guards a section of shirts and records. He singles me out from across the room and hops up on his chair. Step on up, get your merch here. I got t-shirts, I got tank tops, I got all the gifts and the countermints, and a discerning consigoer of considerable taste might, might want. You! I gesture to myself, my face fl flushing red. Yes, you. You look like a fellow who knows their music. How, how's the fine 12-inch long playing vinyl record made and distributed by Pop Canada's premier punk punk rock outfit? Uh, tally ho, good sir. Please stop yelling at me. <laughs> how about I say that? I'm already kind of on edge because this is an unfamiliar place and I don't know anybody here and I would appreciate if you would stop singling me out. And I'm sure you're cool, but it's making me a little uncomfortable. The kid immediately hops down off the chair. You got it. Sorry about that. I just get really excited about salesmanship. Yay, we got points with Matt! I can't relate, but I appreciate your enthusiasm nonetheless. Hey, Pablo. Your friend looked lost, so I figured that I'd give them the old razzle-dazzle. How the hell are you, Matt? Hey. Day by day, my man. They do that thing where they high-five but also turn into a hug. Hey. Your mom doing better? She's still single if you want to be my dad. I could make that con uh, connect. <laughs> and I have to deal with you every single day? Fair enough. Who's your bud? Hey. That's Darren. Thought I'd bring out a concert pal. Pablo leans close to Matt. Is Darren cool? Mm. Matt eyes me. I eye him back. He cracks a smile. Yeah. Pablo brings me back for a bro hug. My dude! I'm not sure what to say, but the courtesy to pats on the back as a customary in our society for people who don't know you super well, but still want to be friendly to. Hey. Pablo's a total card. Kid plays hell of a bass. Yeah, man. When we were starting out in the Witch House band? Yeah, sounds great. You know I'm out of that game. It's a shame. You know that... Um, Bacon Fail would would have slayed. <laughs> It'll say once you actually start making music instead of printing out a bunch of band shirts. We got the sickest logo! While Matt and Pablo talk, I check out the merch. These t-shirts are actually really nice. Hey. Looks like the, the opener's coming on. Let's go spot up close. Hey. So it's like... Was like Matt in a band with this kid or something? Like, I don't fucking know. Matt and I walked over to the stage where a crowd of where a crowd begins to form. The band walks on stage and picks up a variety of strange instruments. Is that a harpus harpus accord? The lead singer addresses the crowd. He has a mandolin slung behind his back. Hey, what's up everybody? We're Johnson Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. My name is Daniel. Let's start the show. Oh no, these guys. What? Without time to respond, the band starts playing the most catastrophic noise I've ever heard. What is this? Matt doesn't say anything. He just hands me earplugs. Thanks! I put the earplugs in and whatever hell is assaulting my ears gets a lot quieter. For a band this bad, they sure do seem to have a lot of fun. I guess that's what really matters. Jesus, did that cellist just break his bow in half? I don't get this. The set seems to be going on forever. There's no break in the songs and I think one of the band members' job is specifically to burn poetry on stage. I turn to Matt and try to start a conversation. I'm just screaming in the background. So you're going to a lot of concerts here, huh? Hmm. What? Uh, ask again. So you go to a lot of concerts out here, huh? What? I I'm gonna ask again. So you... Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Matt turns back to his attention to the show. He can't hear me, so I just drop and try to enjoy the music. You mean enjoy the screaming? Okay, no, this is impossible. How long have we been playing the same song? 10 minutes? 20? A year? Eventually, eventually, the set ends, but only a drummer sp sprains his ankle during the saxophone solo. They promised that it was part of the act, so he was carried off stage, crying. Mm. Matt and I both pull our, out our earplugs. Mm. Man, that was something. I promise Pop is much better. I just have a lot of questions that I know I'll never get answered to. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he sprains his ankle at every show. They were being real about that one. 
Hmm. Let's grab another beer. He's <laughs> just like, let's drink more alcohol. Matt and I work our way out of the crowd and back to the bar. More and more people file into the concert space as it gets closer to the main act. It's getting kind of crowded in here. We grab our beers and I try to follow back to Matt to our spot. But there are so many people here that I'm having a hard time keeping up. As I work my way through the uh, through the throngs of excitement con concert goers, I realize I've lost Matt entirely. I stop and look around, seeing nothing but a sea of hip 20-somethings. I'm lost. How am I ever going to find Matt here? Where's the exit? Are there even exits? What if I'm trapped in this building forever? Am I going to see my daughter ever again? What if a terrible bang gets back on stage? What if- <laughs> Suddenly, a hand reaches out and grabs me. It's Matt. Hey, yeah. Almost lost you, buddy. Phew. I got really nervous there for a second. You and me both, dude. He takes my hand and leads me, leads me back to the stage. I can feel myself blushing a little. Oh, they're holding hands! I know the thing's happening, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we finally settle back into our spot and wait for the band to start. Busy place, huh? Yeah, pop really brings out a crowd. So you go to concerts a lot? Oh yeah, it's one of my absolute favorite things in the world. I think it's one thing to listen to a music and connect with it, but when you're in a room with full of people connecting with the music in just the same way that you are, that's magic. I suddenly have the urge to beat. Curse this tiny dad bladder. I never heard it that way. That's really beautiful. Also, I have to pee. <laughs> Hurry up, man. They're about to go on. I squeeze my way out of the crowd towards the restroom. I really should have gone before I left the house, but Amanda was watching beauty videos in the bathroom. She had an eyeliner wing going halfway across her face, which was actually really good, good to look at. I'm so proud of her. Oh, <laughs> she's... Oh, Darren's so proud of Amanda for her makeup skills. I make it to the restroom finally, but it's one of those single-person restrooms with a line for me outside of it. As soon as I finish my business, the band starts. Crap. The people that were initially milling around in the venture crowd up against the stage has pop played their first music. How am I ever gonna find Matt now? Oh shit. We're lost. What the hell is this? Okay, I'm so confused. Like, what? Did we just turn into Minecraft? Or like, what's that, what's that game back in the Habo Hotel? Do you guys remember that? That's really old. Everyone's rushing to the main stage to watch Pup. I'm sure Matt will still be there too. I gotta find him before I get trampled by all these rowdy youths. Find that dad. <laughs> this is funny. Are you serious? Oh, we actually have to find Darren. Ow! This is the part of the game where you should have been hearing a licensed tune. Is that Barry? <laughs> is Barry singing right now? Oh my god. He even got permission to whitelist the song for you <laughs> But their systems are seriously broken now. I love Barry. If you guys don't know Barry, he's the editor for Game Grumps. Oh my god, this is so awesome. So we add the, the song that you're listening to right now. Where the frig am I supposed to be going? It's better than risking content ID. It is Barry, thank you. To you streamers and let's players, I have one decree. Please check out the band called Pop and their song DVP. <laughs> I love the game grub so much. I'm so happy that they all were a part of this making of this game. The song is great and the video is tight. Yes, take it from me. Oh my freaking god. I fucking love them so much. Oh shit! Did I die? But it's kind of hard to explain right now, but you'll get it, I promise. You should really go check it out. It's a really good video. I died. <laughs> I'm so happy because um, if anyone didn't know, there's an option in the menu for people who are doing Let's Plays or streamers on Twitch where you can turn off the copyright music. There's supposed to be copyright music here. That's why they put Barry singing. This is so funny. Anyway, after searching and searching, I realize it's impossible. I'll never be able to find Matt in the sea of subculture. I guess I'll just camp out here. I watched. <laughs> I can't concentrate. I watch Pop set by lo Lonesome Out next to a bunch of hip 20 somethings. I can tell that they're judging my clothes and I want so badly to grab them by the sh shoulders and explain the usefulness of the utility of pockets, but I try to focus on the concert. <laughs> Man, I wish Matt were here. <laughs> I'm so dead. This game is fucking funny. <laughs> the show finally ends and I wait for Matt outside. After a minute or two, Matt spots me. Hey. 
Dude, you sure are psyched for Sora. Sorry I lost you back there. Hey. It's all good. Wasn't it a great show? Totally. Would have been more fun with you, though. Oh. Well, next time I guess you'll just have to hold hands the whole time so we don't lose each other, huh? <gasps> Ooh, that! What are you trying to say? I laugh. Am I blushing? Hey. You hungry? Starving. Hey. Follow me. Yay! All right, we're gonna get you with him. Matt and I walk into a tiny little diner with a cute neon sign. We tear into some bacon and eggs in the corner booth. Hey. So there I am in the pit trying to explain a face tattoo to a guy. I didn't mean to elbow him in the face tattoo, but he's already seeing red. Not from the tattoo, which coincidentally was red. He's lumbering towards me and there's nowhere to go. Hey. It's the end for me, right? Then out of nowhere, I get this idea. I just lean back and spread my arms. Just like that, and I'm, in the cr I'm crowd surfing away from him in slow motion. You should have seen the look on his face. <laughs> Brought him beer afterwards and we were cool. We still follow each other on social media. He has he has beautiful kids. Glad you guys worked that out. Hey, uh, yeah, man. Just goes to show you that punk is not dead. It just drives a um, minivan and has to hire a babysitter. <laughs> so how did you see all those amazing concerts? Hey. Oh, I used to tour in a band. We were small, but it got us to travel around the states. Whoa. Oh, yeah, I mean we were poor and we had to scrap a lot, of, a lot together just to survive. But I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. Hey. But yeah. That's how, that's how I knew a bunch of those people at the show. Music likes to build this amazing community, especially in town like this. Just a lot of positive energy and good vibes. Got the feeling. Plenty of friendly people, especially that Pablo kid. Oh. oh man, everybody loves Pablo. His mom's been raising him on her own, and you can tell that it's been tough on both of them. I know he looks up to me, and I try to help him out whenever I can. That's really nice of you. Thanks. Us single parents just really need to look out for each other. Oh, that's so sweet. How's Carmencia? She says she wants to learn the drums. Oh boy. Uh -huh. It'll be loud, and I'll need to take a lot of aspirin, but I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I'm suddenly very grateful that all my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Photography, collaging, whatever that is she does on the internet. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> I'm trying to be supportive of Carmencia's rebellious face, but I guess that kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? I think it would be a good daddy-daughter activity to find something rebel- for to find something to rebel against together. Hey. Like what? Consumerism? Why do we gotta get up early at the day after Thanksgiving and line up to buy things? Why can't we just share things? Mm. Camarade, you're speaking the dangerous thing here. <laughs> he and I laugh. We keep digging into our big plates of greasy dinner food. The breakfast I order for dinner is absolutely hitting the spot. Oh, Man, dude. being a single dad is rough sometimes. It's a lonely feeling. I understand that too well. I mean, at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to. Hey. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Mm. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. Oh my god, Matt is so precious! Matt gets nervous talking to people, but he's so cool. Me too! I never actually really consider myself an extrovert. I never really consider myself an introvert. I'm just really uncomfortable in every situation, always. Hey. Uh, you're fine. You're actually really easy to talk to, you know that? I smile. Matt and I spend the rest of the night trading daughter stories. Turns out our kids are a lot alike. We finish up the late night dinners and head out. Aww. We walk, we walk back to the cul-de-sac, cul cul back to our respective houses. Hey. Tonight was a blast, man. Although, I'm probably gonna feel it in my knees in the morning. <laughs> you and me both. I, uh, don't usually like to go to these things alone. It was really cool that you had. it was really cool to have you there with me. I'm glad. Hey. Alright, I'm calling it quits for the night. Stay cool, man. He called, he called me cool. Matt called me cool! <laughs> I'm walking to the house with my heart, with my heart in my throat. Amanda pops her head up from the door. Hmm. Hey, Pops, how was the show? Matt thinks I'm cool. Mm -hmm. You don't say. Manda Panda, Matt thinks I'm cool. Blind leading the blind, huh? Wow, I just got dunked on by my own child. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, I'm hitting the hay, Pops. I'll see you in the pit. Night, kiddo. Date complete. How was the date? Whoa, we get dad points too? Hey, we got a B on our date. That's not bad. So protective dad. We got that. Goofy, Ska, definitely Ska, and Scene for, for some reason. But we got a good day! That's good! B ranked! I'm happy. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumble, I hear the mail truck pull up through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries to get it in. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has her headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want to hit this big old envelope from the HIA. Yeah. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. What is that? 
Oh, Horn Institution for the Arts. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she, oh, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. <laughs> she doesn't seem to hear me and spits out the pieces of envelope. She pulls the letter and unfolds it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Please tell me she got it! Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. <gasps> Yay! She got it! I'm so happy! Oh, I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives you a big hug. Congrats, sweetie! That's amazing! I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god! I really can't believe I got in! Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Uh. Wait, Dad, uh. I know this is really expensive and it's so far away. I think that- I think for a moment. HIA was one of the most expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Huh? Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight dinner. Your choice, whatever you want. <laughs> whatever? Amanda and I walk along the beach side, tearing up the full wrap burritos from the nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Coast was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple girl. Just give me a Rito with a view. <laughs> Can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on the patch of grass and we watch the ship sail lazily through the bay. And the dorm is right near a bunch of cafes and there's all these galleries nearby and there's discounts if you bring your student ID and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just so excited. Did I mention that the students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all their professional photos edited softwares for free. That's so cool! <laughs> It's so nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it in between bites of her burrito. I, I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate is going to be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone that's similar, si similar major and interests. I bet we're going to be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't get me started on bad roommates. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't get bad roommates. Our only roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home that one night. We spent the semester fabricating a story about our own foreign exchange student who really was had a bad cough with a sound exactly like a dog's bark. Oh. Car ruled. Yeah. Ooh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note for saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit, or maybe a snake, or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit though? <laughs> I think it would. Oh boy, I think I'll leave that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega? Mm -hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did you? What? Hmm. No. I don't want you to put a damper on good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park with the last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need to scholar we need the scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home on the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads across. And don't even get me started on paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. <laughs> oh, Dad, don't cry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person. And I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears on my burrito. It's gonna make them taste sad. <laughs> I pull Amanda into a hug and kiss her on the forehead. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. Love you, too, pops. Aww. Okay, I'm gonna end the episode of Dream Daddy here, but that was really interesting and so sweet with Amanda and everything because I think people, f I know this is like a dating simulator for dads, but I think people forget the element of us being a father for a reason, so we have to look out for Amanda as well. Not only dating the nice lovely dads in the neighborhood, we have to watch out for the kids of the game. So I'm so happy that Amanda's our daughter. <laughs> anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Dream Daddy, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you would like to support the channel on Patreon, there's a link in the description to get early access to videos, videos are Patreon only, a Discord server to come talk to me, and a bunch of other exclusive stuff. Or if you prefer, you can check out my store. That is another way you can support the channel. Okay, I'm glad that we get into this. I'm glad that we got a good date with Matt so far. We're gonna go on a date with him again to see what's gonna happen. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought about Matt's date, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Then you must be in love with many women. Oh, get called out, Rumpel! Shit! I stand up. I would appreciate you just complimenting me when you mean it. While his fingers tease the edges of my...
I wired my license to <laughs> and he 